She has wide range of expertise in fields such as non-rationalism and transformation in higher education. She has also conducted a lot of research in first-year experience in student development theory, in students' decisions and student success. And recent senior management positions she has held include senior researcher at the Houghton City Region Observatory, which is a partnership between the Houghton Provincial Government, the University of Johannesburg, and the University of the Big Patterson. She has also been a research manager at Higher Education South Africa, now known as USA. Universities, University of University South Africa. Uh, she's currently the director of the South African National Resource Center, commonly known as SANWE, which focuses primarily on first year experience and student transitions. And that center is based at the University of Johannesburg. <coughs> she will be talking on the topic deepening scholarship and practice on first year experience with SANWE. We will have 30 minutes of presentation and then we can use the last few minutes for questions and comments. Over to you. Students. 
it was really about rethinking and reframing the way in which our public universities receive students and the ways in which we set up or not our students for success in the system. So the setting up of the SANRC was very timely back then. You will remember it was also the time when we were receiving lots of data from the Council on Higher Education. Um, we had our colleagues Ian Scott and a team from the CHD who had also made the proposal for the lengthening of the undergraduate degree and they were also calling for a more flexible curriculum structure. So the centers were set up in the wake of all these very serious national concerns about student retention. And um, the hope was that a national center would be able to strengthen the first year experience nationally, but also that all of us, all of our public universities would be able to work in kind of a, a non-competitive space. As we know, our, our universities have a history of uh, com competition um, and, and fragmentation. And we wanted first year experience to be something that moves from the margins of the institution right into the center. And that it should not be something that we have to ad advocate for, it should be something that is accepted and mainstream. And hence the rationale for this national center on first year experience. This is the way in which the center was conceptualized in terms of the core commitments. They were very simple. Um, in what I call phase one of our work. And when I say phase one, it's really to do with the UCD grant cycles. So this was the phase one, the setting up phase, where it was really about three key goals. We tried to keep it very, very simple. And the first one was about setting a scholarly agenda for South Africa's first year experience community. Now that meant crucially trying to develop and stimulate a national pool of literature about first year experience, student transitions, and of course, the big prize at the end, student success. It was also about developing our first year experience community through collaboration and networking. So we worked very hard to develop what I call a professional network of first year experience scholars and practitioners. And in particular, we made sure to develop an annual conference where we invited um, people, all student-facing higher education professionals, to attend and to learn and to exchange scholarship and practice amongst all the various universities. But importantly, hence the name, providing resources for South Africa's first-year experience community. Now, as I mentioned, this center is loosely modeled on the U.S. Um, center, which really is about a clearinghouse for first-year experience materials and resources. And so we try to do the same, and I will show you how. As I say, this first phase was really about setting up a foundation. We received support and a guidance from an advisory group. Um, things have changed over the last 10 years, but the first advisory group, we, will, we had um, representatives from UP, John claude Lemons, Jennifer Coy, who was the director of our sister organization in the United States, Prop Nguenia from DUT, Andre Pancel from UJ, and um, over the last 10 years, people have moved on. Jennifer Coy is now with the Association for Public and Land Grant Universities in the United States. There's new leadership at the NRC. Many of you know, sadly, we lost Prop Nguenia um, during the pandemic. Um, but this was the core group of people that helped us to set up the new center. We worked on what we called a program of professional development and continuing education. And the annual SANRC First Year Experience Con Conference was a key part of this. We started out with 100 delegates and our last conference, which was earlier this year, we had 180. So we've worked very hard to try and build this community um, over the last decade. Part of this program of professional development and continuing education, we also wanted to develop writing and publication skills um, amongst our colleagues, particularly some of the practitioners. We didn't want to have to keep reinforcing this divide between the academics and the practitioners. 
So we really wanted to make sure that all scholars and practitioners got the opportunity to be equipped with writing and communication skills. So we held a series of workshops where we were able to partner people up with, in a kind of a mentor-mentee relationship. The first uh, of these workshops you see here was a partnership with Fondani at uh, Seaport um, as a way to help capacitate our first year experience scholars and professionals. We also did really interesting things such as FYE at our institution. So I built a space on the website where we invited all our public universities to be able to populate um, this space with information about their first year experience programs. Um, and we had a number of universities that sort of readily came to the fore and gave us the materials to use on this particular <coughs> space. We also did things such as awareness raising about first year experience. So there was National FYE Month where we invited the universities to do particular things in, in support of what we call service to students. And this happened every May. Um, and we gave um, certificates to those participating institutions. We also made a pledge for first year experience, part of the National FYE Month. Some of you might have read our Mzuzo newsletter where this was really about developing the community. We tried to share as much information and news as possible about what was actually happening at our universities um, with regard to first year experience. But importantly, we wanted to, to surface the student voice. Now we did this in different ways. So there was always a standing student voices panel presentation at our annual conference. But we also tried to reach out as much as possible to students through different events, student panel discussions at the annual conference, we attended um, orientation week, <coughs> we attended the sessions for parents at orientation week. What you're seeing here is a student panel session <coughs> for students from DUT, and then we have some events that we um, organized at the University of Mpumalanga and um, Vaal University of Technology. Research. We have an FYE thought series. Um, and we also hope to be growing the series of research reports um, that the center uh, is able to, to put out. Special editions on first year experience. I serve on the editorial board of the Journal of Student Affairs in Africa, and we put out three special editions on first year experience, where I'm very happy to say that we were able to invite um, different forms of scholarship, academic pieces, but as well as more reflective pieces to make sure that the practitioners also felt part of the whole academic writing um, exercise. And um, this is the outcome of, um, of our work in this area. Our website, so everything is documented online. Um, what we really want to do is have a space where um, we have suggested readings for the first year experience community. We have what we call essential readings, but to make sure that there's um, a dedicated space where you don't have to pay subscription fees, where you don't have to look too hard to find information about first year experience. Phase two was a totally different cycle having now established what we call the national and international footprint, we wanted to do something fresh and different. And this was also during the time of the pandemic, when the Dean had really encouraged us to think um, very carefully about how to entrench this new center and make sure that it very much serves the interests of um, our public universities. The advisory group um, is different in this new cycle. We have representatives from UKZN, the International Association of Student Affairs, um, the University of Johannesburg, <coughs> our own 
Ephraim from CF Malela, UCT, um, UP, and of course a standing representative from, from the DHET. So the focus in phase two was a specific focus on what we call issues affecting our underserved students. <coughs> that is, the majority of our student population, our NISFAT students, those who happen to be black and from low income backgrounds. We really wanted to make sure that we serve the interests of our students and to make sure that we are all contributing in one way or the other towards this goal of what we call service to students. So this was the focus of, of phase two. It was to serve the national higher education system by supporting South Africa's universities with the academic knowledge, but importantly also the practical training that will enable universities to serve their students most effectively in managing the trajectory of their journey through the higher education system. So the work program that was built was about educating, capacitating, and sensitizing South Africa's universities, I know this is a mouthful, toward the multifaceted needs of the student populations, the concept of student transitions, um, and the academic, social, and psychological complexities of the undergraduate higher education journey, with a particular, but not an exclusive focus on the first year student. Um, so we really wanted in this phase to intentionally lean into conversations with our public universities, particularly our senior management, um, about key issues that affect our students and um, to help us brainstorm um, nationally in terms of what actually best serves our students. And we wanted our work in this second phase to be informed by student development theory. As many of you know, this is a very fascinating, vibrant field. Um, and it, it speaks to complex processes of change and development that happens <laughs> to students as a result of their time in the higher education journey. Many changes that students go through. Changes in work, changes in identity, changes in relationships, changes in their cognitive learning. Hopefully this is a time where students move away from reliance on peers and authority figures um, toward more independent thought, <coughs> autonomy and self-authorship. And um, self student development theory, or what we call SDT, really helps to inform our thinking about how best to serve our students at particular developmental stages in their lives. Um, it helps us to better understand student behavior, where they're at, to design learning experiences that really speak to where students are coming from. And, um, you know, one is not naive. I think it's very difficult to, um, to be able to connect with students. Um, this particular generation can be hard uh, um, to connect to. And um, student development theory can give us the language and the tools. Um, to do this and to help support our students in navigating all the complexities of um, the higher education journey. But very importantly, this phase, we wanted to be about upholding what I call the value system of first year experience. Um, this is probably, I would say, the most important part of the work. This is our value system and philosophy behind first year experience. First year experience is what Madiba used to call Ubuntu. Uh, remember, his presidency was the golden age of Ubuntu. The realization that we all are collectively engaged um, with our students in the higher education journey. It's also about qualities of kindness, compassion, reciprocity. It's about building safety nets for, for our students. Um, and designing soft landing spaces for them so that when they get to university, it's not a, a huge shock um, for them to enter and navigate this entirely new um, territory. Um, there is a very compelling body of research, qualitative research, 
Um, that has been done over the last decade, particularly in the wake of um, student protest movements, about the experiences of our students. And much of that highly respected research tells us that our students do not enjoy their time at university. In fact, many of them regard it as an endurance test. So while we may be able to get some, we know what our retention rates are, we may be able to get some to the graduation stage. Unfortunately, they may be getting there, um, seeing it as kind of a right that they have to go through uh, with some suffering and hardship involved. And that is not what we want to do. We want our students to enjoy the fullness of the higher education journey and reap the benefits of being immersed in um, the higher education space. And I think first year experience value system is very special. And I think Maya Angelou says it all. It's really about the power of human connection and about bringing that humanizing disposition to, um, to the higher education system. Um, the ways in which we deal with students uh, can determine how they react to the opportunities and challenges in our lives. And we see the human touch as really the, um, the foundation of first year experience, philosophy, and, and the value system. So, when we talk about leaning into conversations about key issues, we identified um, some of these key issues um, and we decided to work with them in the form of research reports. The first one is about good orientation practice and helping universities understand how important it is to design meaningful orientation practices. Targeted support for first generation students? Do we really know how to support first generation students? I was once a first generation student myself. Um, so this is very much about lived experience for me. And there are many things that our students are going through um, on the ground issues that some of us, while we are patting ourselves on the back about our student success programs and our first year experience programs, we probably do not have a great amount of insight into what they are going through. Also, good teaching practice for all undergraduate teaching staff. But really, it's also about, it's for all who teach um, at, in the undergraduate space. We also are working on a research report on a guide to navigating university for families. So the family and peers are a very important part of the student success puzzle, um, as we, we know um, from our first generation students. The family is the cornerstone, really, of our students starting their higher education journey. And we really wanted to be able to present this guide, particularly to parents um, who often come to the orientation week, and be able to show them exactly what is happening to their student, and importantly, how best they can support um, their, their family. Also, a book on first year experience, what we call a primer or an introductory work that is going to serve as basic and essential reading for all staff um, who are student facing, all scholars and practitioners in the field. We also completed an international survey on the peer leadership. Um, we do not have enough information about peer leadership at a national level, and we were very fortunate to be able to partner with the University of Georgia and the National Resource Center, the one that is based at the University of South Carolina. This was a global effort, and the participating countries include the United States, Canada, the UK, Australia, and um, it's very useful to have a global outlook, as you know. I mean, we heard from Graham this morning. Having that global outlook is so important because we can often have tunnel vision and be looking down all the time. It's very important to be able to, to look up and around us and see that student success um, uh, issue is an issue that is um, of relevance and importance all around the world. We, are, we have uh, sent out the disaggregated data sets to each participating university, um, but we're also working on a national report on, on the state of peer leadership. In South Africa. 
another special edition of our Dean Accredited Journal, um, Journal of Student Affairs in Africa, where we critically reflected about the process of deepening scholarship on the first year experience. Capacity building, and this is where a lot of my energy and time has gone um, over the last few years, very challenging, uh, particularly after COVID. Um, but uh, this was about a series of capacity building workshops, or what we call consultancy services, where we designed a menu uh, of topics, and universities were also free to approach us as well, um, in order to design particular topics um, where we could advise and assist them. Uh, we worked with many of our historically, well, our former historically disadvantaged universities. We worked with UniZulu, um, UniVen, Water Sisulu, the University of Fortier, who are working to drive their own uh, first year experience program at the institution. So this capacity building um, was also about different services to universities. So we did things like quality reviews for um, UNISA student retention unit. Um, there were lots of speaking engagements and workshops um, at various universities. Some of you might have attended our annual first year experience conference where we, we structured the, the schedule around professional development workshops, the academic paper sessions, workshop sessions, we really wanted to have a space where the first year experience community could find a home and uh, find a place where scholarship and practice, some of the tough issues that face us, we can share in the national space. Uh, we also hosted what we call biannual national seminars or webinars for all university staff. These were very highly attended, particularly during the times of COVID. Um, when it was much easier to, for us to all connect online. A blog space for the first year experience community. Um, we wanted to start these conversations with each other um, online and the invitation went out to the universities to, um, to write about their experiences in the form of blog pieces. Now the idea was to create a very community, a vibrant community where we could share our experiences and write without fear of having to hold it to very high academic standards. I mean, the idea was that there should be very readable, accessible short pieces where um, people can share and if necessary, vent. Uh, um, and of course, the, this space is moderated by, by ourselves. The student query site, um, most importantly, what I found is that part of our work, um, I mean, there was a lot of media work that had been done, so I think that the word got out that there's a sense of the first year experience and, you know, people can help you. So um, we, we actually became inundated with, um, with calls for assistance from students, and we didn't have the mandate to be able to do that, and there was obviously no capacity to problem solve. Um, but what it did, was allow us huge insight into um, what is really happening on the ground with our students. Um, when there was an accommodation crisis, as there is almost every year at our university, um, we heard about it first from the students before we read about it um, in the media. And um, it, it, it's obviously very difficult to be able to pick up the phone and make phone calls and help people in a sort of concrete way. So this site was set up uh, to kind of formalize all these queries and to make sure that we have a way of um, documenting everything that students are telling us about their experience. Now some of the issues that we are presented with we can do something about it, we can make some referrals or calls and help students and it can't go further than that. But some, we absolutely can't. Um, but this was a way of seeing exactly what is happening um, with our students. 
And I, I, I do think that you know it, it really is cause of critical reflection. You know, I'll be doing a process of evaluation um, with the DHET uh, as we close out this project. And one of the issues that you know I'd like to have a space to reflect on is what we have learned about the student experience from listening to the voices of students. Um, you know, we often the conversation with us is about dropouts. But um, we don't really know enough yet about the stopouts. Those are the people who leave the system, but then come back into the system again through what I see is a variety of routes. And that sometimes involves you know, a great deal of debt. It's a wastage of time uh, on the part of students because they haven't earned the degree in the first, in the, in the first place. Um, and then a lot of heartbreak on the part of families who've been so heavily invested in um, the, the higher education of, of their students. So um, we, we, we do need to understand the fullness of student experiences. Um, sometimes, you know, that conversation can get lost um, as we uh, design our first year experience programs, as we sit in our conference rooms, um, to really understand what is happening out there and uh, how we can sometimes manage that disconnect between what is happening there and what we ourselves um, are doing. Oh, can I touch on it? Oh, my goodness, one second. Um, so these are some of our achievements. We've managed to contribute to this professional network, uh, the development of a pool of national literature, I would say greater awareness of some of the critical issues facing students, increased exposure of our FYE community to what I call good or promising practices. Um, and just my last, uh, my last comment, future parts, where do we go from here? We have set up this amazing foundation. Um, there's so much of the work that's been done. We're hoping to find synergies with the Siete Mollela network. And I definitely think there's, you know, there's so much that we can share with Siete Mollela because we can actually become a, a sort of a, a single um, a voice um, and a, a bigger group of advocates working together. And um, we're going to see uh, what the future holds with, um, with, with regard to where we go. But also just in terms of opening up some of the possibilities. You know, we come back to Madiba and, you know, he's reminded that it's always impossible until it's done. We have started this work and we are not going to be letting it go even though formally um, our project cycle has closed. Um, there's a core group of us that will still be continuing this work from wherever we are. So there is still this platform and there's so much that, that we can build on. I'm going to leave it there but I just must say one thing before I go. I'm very glad that all of you, this network exists. I'm really glad for the Cresley Foundation um, because I think the Gracie Foundation has been here for the long haul, as far as I can see, and um, I think the commitment, the vision to um, helping the South African higher education, it's the antithesis of Trump's America first sort of mentality, and I think we are really very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ansila. Uh, there's obviously a lot to say about Sandwick. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. I'm aware that um, we've run out of time, but I will invite one burning question. If the question is not burning, just keep it. You can ask and say that during tea time. Any one burning question or comment? Okay. There is no burning question or comment. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, let's be considered. Before she goes, with a small gift for Ansila here.
Okay, let's enjoy our tea. Let's stay in the problem.